hello welcome and welcome back thank you for clicking on this video my name is esther and i'll be showing you how to make this lovely baby dress you will need a fabric of your choice a ribbon a zipper and a lining for your fabric you will also need a basic bodice but in case you don't you can draft along with me so right here i have my lining piece which i will be using to draft my bodice so i'm placing my fabric on fold the folded part is for the front and I'll go ahead and mark a zipper allowance for the back. Next is for me to mark a guideline which will also serve as a shoulder line right here. So from that guideline, I'm going to measure my bodice length. Please include a seaming allowance if you are drafting directly on a fabric. So on that guideline, I'm going to mark half the shoulder width measurements. Do well to add seaming allowance. Then I just come down a bit and mark the same. So I'm going to mark my shoulder slope since the shoulder is not straight. And then I'm marking my ham hole depth. So at that ham hole point, I have my chest line, so I'm going to put quarter of the round chest measurement of the child plus ease and also seaming allowance. Though I'm not adding seaming allowance now, I will remember to add seaming allowance while cutting it out. The same measurement I use on the chest line is the same that I use on the waist line. So I just connect all those points that I've marked. To connect my shoulder slope, I'm marking my desired neck width, which is 2.5 inches. Then I'm connecting the shoulder slope. Then I'm marking my desired neck depth for the back and then for the front. With that, I'm just going to connect to form my neckline. To connect the handhold, I'm just going to find the midpoint and I'm going to go in and this is for the front while the back I will just keep it straight for the back then I'm going to connect my ham hole in case you don't have a French curve just do well to mark one inch away from that corner and you connect so we are pretty much done with the bodice but I just want to come down here by three quarter of an inch since this piece is a custom made for a child and I'm going to blend it to the waistline Please, this I am only doing for the front, not for the back. The back stays straight while the front is slightly curved, just to accommodate the tummy. And with that, I'm just cutting out for the back first. So, I will fold my front away and I'm cutting it. Please don't forget, seaming allowance is important. You don't want to run out of it and notch where the zipper will sit so right here i'm putting my bodice back in place since i'll be adding sleeve so you measure where you want your sleeve to stop so it all boils down to you so measure where you want your sleeve to stop and place a notch at that point I'm going to use this lining piece as a template to cut my fashion fabric. So basically I just pin it in place then cut my fashion fabric. Please when cutting your fashion fabric don't forget to place the notches back along the ham hole where your sleeve will stop the zipper point. After cutting, I have two pieces for both the fashion fabric and the lining piece when it comes to the back. And the front, I have one piece because the front is cut on fold. So I'm going to go ahead and place it right side facing and I'll be joining this piece at the shoulder. So please use your allocated seaming allowance to join this at the shoulder. Assuming you add a seaming allowance while well, you cut it out. So after joining it at the shoulder, I'm going to go ahead and measure that notch that I had put. That's for the sleeve. So from notch to notch, measure it. Whatever you have, you can multiply it by 2, 2.5 or by 3. Depending on the amount of volume you want your gather sleeve to be. 
so since i didn't want to hem it i just decided to place mine on fold but you you can have a single layer and you decide to hem your sleeve so i measured mine and i multiplied it by 2.5 and the width that I have here is 3 inches. Please, this width depends on the age of the child. You don't want to use 3 inches for a newborn. So you want to use 1.5 or 2 inches depending on the age of the child and how prominent you want the sleeve to be. So mine is 3 inches by 2.5 times my desired sleeve length. So just curve that edge and cut yours out as well. So I'm going to use this as a template to cut the second one. So you just cut the two sleeves equally and don't forget to notch the center of the sleeves. Assuming you have cut yours, just go ahead and gather it up. So you're gathering both sleeves. After gathering it up, now you are going to place it at that notch point. So from one point of the notch to the other that is where your sleeve will be so that center point of the sleeve that you had notched you are matching it to the shoulder line so you are going to adjust the gathers to be as even as possible then you pin this in place then you are going to stitch that using a bit less than your seaming allowance so i've stitched mine my two sleeves right here so I'm going to bring my lining piece over. So I'm placing my lining piece on my bodice right side facing. Please do well to push that sleeves out of the way because you don't want to catch it when you are stitching. Then you go ahead and stitch the neckline. Just the neckline. After stitching the neckline, I'm just going to go in with my scissors and notch. Please, while you notch yours, be careful not to cut the seam. So you're just notching so that the neckline lies down nice and easy. Just to make the neckline to be more nice, you're going to understitch that neckline by pushing the raw edge to the lining piece and you're going to stitch it. After understitching the neckline, it's time to push your sleeves inside. You can even pin it and you're placing your lining over and you're going to stitch the ham hole. With your sleeve sandwich in between your lining and your fashion fabric, stitch the ham hole using your allocated seaming allowance. After stitching the ham hole, go in with your scissors and give it a notch. But personally, when it comes to ham hole and sleeve, I like to go in with a pinkish scissors. Most people call it zigzag scissors. So pinkish scissors, I just love to trim down that armhole seam. This gives me a nice finish, in my opinion anyway. So you trim it down. You can as well trim down the other side. After trimming it down, it's time to turn it right side out. So it's either you use your normal scissors and notch or you use pinkish scissors and trim it down. Those are the two options but I like the letter. So just turn your bodice right side out by passing the back through the shoulder and when you turn it right side out just give it a good press and then understitch your ham hole as far as you can go. So right here on my skirt piece you want to make sure that your skirt length is about three to four inches even five inches longer than your desired skirt length and also the width should be about three times the waist measurement except you have less fabric you can use maybe two to 2.5 times the waist measurement so i decided to section mine into three pieces that's the two side for the back and also for the front so right here i'm going to roll hem just the upper part of my skirt just the upper part and i'm doing that for the three pieces just the upper part not the down part just the upper part just roll hem it so i've roll hem my skirt piece right now and i've also overlocked the down part of my bodice you can use a bias step to finish that nicely so i'm going to go ahead and pleat my skirt on it so you want to pleat the skirt and you're going to do same for the back 
remember the width it was three times the waist measurement so you should have a perfect pleat at this point so this is how it looks after i've pleated it so i'm going to be placing it on the bodice so just place it about one inch away from the edge of the bodice just for extra color i'm going to just add this ribbon to it so i'm going to be stitching this ribbon about half inch away from my hemline then i'm going to stitch it to the bodice both the front and the back skirt piece so this is how it looks after stitching it to the bodice now i'm going to bring my lining over yes my lining is not three times the waist measurement my lining is actually two times the waist measurement you can make it 2.5 times but i didn't just want extra volume at this point so i'm going to gather my lining and i'm going to stitch it to the bodice for this dress i'll be adding a back tie so my back tie is measured four inches and the width is 28 inches you can make the width shorter or longer depending on the age of the child you are working with right here i have stitched my lining piece to my lining and my back tie i have stitched it and i've turned it right side out and i've given it a press so i'm going to go ahead and place it here and pin it in place so you'll be stitching your back tie to secure it in place before you go ahead with the next step so assuming you have stitched the back tie you're going to place your dress like so the side match the side lining to lining fashion fabric to fashion fabric i'm going to stitch the side so you do well to stitch your own and you're doing it for both sides of the dress so right here i have stitched the side of my dress and it all looks good at this point if i may say so what i'm going to do right now i'm going to be stitching the back so you want to make sure that you match this back piece that you have pleated so match that part then you stitch close the down part then you stitch on a zip so please stitch on your zipper at this point so after fixing a zipper i will go ahead and hem the down part of my dress and also hem the lining so i've fixed the zipper it looks nice and neat and i've also gone ahead to hem the down part of the dress now to add the bow to it i just pick up a fabric that is 8 inches by 10 inches you might need to adjust this for the edge of a child so i'm going to stitch that and make a bow out of it so this is the bow after i've stitched it i'm going to unstitch it to the dress then i also made a hairband for it if you're interested just let me know i will make a video on how to make a hairband so thank you for watching to this point if this video has been helpful in any way please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and see you in the next tutorial bye for now